Chapter 371 Ancient Magic Scribbles Sat on the edge of the rooftop, Lu Xu sighed, his arms supported him from behind, I want to go not only to stay clear of trouble, but mainly to teach those practitioner trafficking organizations a lesson since they've got some clues. Or maybe, I can send them down to hell to visit their victims. I was never a generous person after all. It's called being a miser. Euphemisms, Lu Xiaoyu mumbled. Yes. I think it's good, Lu Xiaoyu smiled, her face was even more adorable under the mild moonlight. Language was a powerful tool. Stingy could be called being unsympathetic, having poor grades all the time could be described as consistent performance, and even a bully could be said as someone with good manual dexterity. Only those who mastered it would truly appreciate its beauty. Many years ago, there was even a proposal to replace Chinese characters with pinyin. Lu Xu found their argument unbelievable. Despite Lu Xu's stinginess, his greed for money and many other imperfections, Lu Xiaoyu still liked him. She was the reason for his anger and his will to make money. In the past, Lu Xiaoyu already knew that no one could ever be better to her than Lu Xu when he was adding up his change, coin by coin and counted down the date until he could finally buy her a new set of clothes. Back then, Lu Xu would give her a red packet every Chinese New Year. He would purposely make a trip to the bank and exchange a pile of coins and crumpled notes for new notes, just in case she might be looked down upon for only having a pocket of small change. But Lu Xiaoyu did not really care, because she knew Lu Xu earned the money through his own sweat and blood. But Lu Xu cared. This time, he killed three people and his anger had burned for so long. At the end of the day, it was still for her. In fact, Lu Xiaoyu had never seen Lu Xu irritated by anything unrelated to her, except for once, when he received fake money. At the end of the day, it did not matter. None of it did. The only thing that mattered was Lu Xiaoyu's happiness. Lu Xu was her entire world. She would kill anybody in Lu Xu's way. The rest was of negligible importance. Lu Xu had his own set of principles, and Lu Xiaoyu's was Lu Xu. If it was nothing but a mistake, then till the end, just let it be. Suddenly, Lu Xiaoyu inquired, then, can you bring me along this time? Lu Xu pondered for a moment, yes. The condition I told Li Xiao was to bring you along. In any case, Anthony will significantly boost our chances of success, for there's a class B in our enemy's team. Furthermore, our traffic, food and accommodation fares will be fully sponsored by the Heavenly Network. It's 560 yuan per day, though it's not a big sum of money for us now. Lu Xiaoyu shot him a mocking glimpse, look how proud you are. The enemy class B was well hidden. Even the Heavenly Network itself might not be aware of it had Lu Xu not stolen Mang Yu's memory. But the network was by no means at fault, because the person's ascension from C to B was just a recent occurrence. Lu Xiaoyu nodded in agreement, when do we head off? The day after tomorrow, illegally. Li Xiao's a burden. He's now in the blacklist, so he won't be allowed to cross their border, Lu Xu pursed his lips. Smuggle in. Yes, we will be smuggled in. It may be a bit harsh, Lu Xu smiled. Lu Xiaoyu remained unconcerned about that. Suddenly, she absently asked, Will you let them take me away if my parents really come to find me one day? Lu Xu frowned at the potential trap in her question. Then, he replied with another question, Will you leave with them if they come? Lu Xiaoyu paused for a few seconds, Of course not. It's been so many years. No matter the truth, they did abandon me at the orphanage. And now we are good. What can they do if they are really here? But then she suddenly realized, was it not her who posed the question first? After more than ten seconds of deliberation, then what if your parents? Impossible. They will not look for me, Lu Xu grinned. From Lu Xiaoyu's distress, plus 199. Lu Xiaoyu's face darkened, I mean hypothetically, what if they do? Then ask them to go home, what else? We are good now, aren't we? His eyes were twinkling. 
Yes, Lu Xiaoyu's eyes were drawn to the sea of lights in the distance. She used to admire them so much, seeing families of three crowding around the television behind open curtains. It felt so warm. But that feeling was long gone. Actually Lu Xiaoyu wanted to tell Lu Xu, if you want to leave with your parents, that was fine. Just remember to bring me along. With a radiant smile on her face, Lu Xiaoyu sat on the rooftop beside Lu Xu. It felt as if the time had stopped, and the moment would be captured in a photograph as their eternal memory. Lu Xiaoyu knew she was fortunate enough to find warmth in a world so cold. She wanted nothing more. There were still things to be done before their departure. Lu Xu gave another refresher fruit to Little Fury, who urgently needed it in his breakthrough to Class C. Then Little Fury also received two buckets of diluted refresher fruit juice. Honestly speaking, Lu Xu was also curious about a city full of big class F rats. Luo Chang was Lu Xu's base, so he did not mind investing more into it. It also served as a present to Little Fury in recognition of its contributions and distress points. Therefore, Little Fury, Naughty Pig and Big Cat stayed behind to guard the house. Although the sale of chives had to be paused for the moment, Lu Xu did not want his crops stolen either. On the day of setting out, Lu Xu was shocked to see Li Yixiao's face black and blue, who beat you up. Li Yixiao was a class B heavenly king. In the entire country, who dared to bully him besides Nye Ting and Shen Bailey? However, Nye Ting was in the capital, and Shen Bailey would not leave without visiting Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu. So who had such power? Li Yixiao faltered for a while and finally yielded under Lu Xu's relentless inquiry that old priest is not some kind-hearted man. He gave me a piece of magic scribbles which he claimed to be a new product of his class experiments. And he said souls of ancient heroes wandering in the world will be summoned when it's infused with energy. Lu Xu nodded, then? I forgot to bring toilet paper when I used the restroom yesterday, so I used the magic scribbles. You know what, an ancient hero really came. Then he said, I am a warrior of the sky. Who awoke my spirit and what do thou beseech? Li Xiao explained, his awkwardness was clearly visible. Then? Then I asked him to bring me toilet paper. But he hit me good and hard. Bloody hell, I lost. I should have realized the scribbles were a trap. Lu Xu? Lu Xiaoyu? My goodness, you bloody reckless man. Chapter 372 The Search Back then, Chen Bailey gave Li Xiao the magic scribbles after thorough discussion with Nia Ting. At the helm of Luo Cheng, the heart of the cultivation realm, Li Xiao was expected to have supreme power, which took time to form. Thus, when he returned the refresher fruits, the old priest presented him with the scribbles to strengthen his leadership in southern Tibet, a strategic locale in foreign relations. Moreover, it took immense energy and power to summon a top-class B ancient hero, even for a few minutes, which resulted in the instant depletion of one's spirit chi. Therefore, the old priest was not ready to produce the second piece of scribbles even after the stabilization of his class A status but he would have never expected this dramatic ending following its debut. Would it not have been better to have a helper in the remain? Lu Xu thought, his head throbbing. In fact, Nye Ting had picked Li Xiao for this mission partly due to his possession of the magic scribbles, but what he did not know was that their secret weapon had already been lost. Lu Xu had never questioned Li Xiao's ability which enabled his ascension to class B, but truth be told, he always wondered how Li Xiao was accepted as an apprentice by his master? Another thought suddenly struck Lu Xiaoyu, what if Lu Xiaoyu could summon a hero's spirit this way and capture him? Forget it. It was unacceptable to arrest a good man's soul by any means. Besides, they no longer had the scribbles. And now, Lu Xu had a bad feeling about going to Southeast Asia together. Their destination was Thailand. There, white elephants were worshipped as the holy creature, who must be treated with reverence and whose slavery was a blasphemy. Actually, the locals were friendly people, but the country was often victimized by outlaws due to its position as the world's travel paradise, 
boasting both affordable goods and picturesque scenery. The remain will appear in the widely known city of Pattaya, which was said to house a huge population of foreigners who wandered the streets. They could have entered the country easily as tourists had Li Xiao not been on the blacklist. How about we split our routes? You smuggle in and we take the plane, Lu Xu suggested. After all, their travel fares would be fully covered but actually the plane ticket would be so much cheaper than smuggling. Li Xiao asked, do you have a passport? No. No choice then. However, Lu Xu did not really want to leave Li Xiao behind as well. He had plans. By right, traveling to Thailand on foot would not take long as well, but still many chose the boat. As a matter of fact, Thailand was most famous for its transsexual men, which used to result in derogatory labeling of the country and the public's misunderstanding due to being misled by the media. Many people thought they disrespected themselves only in exchange for money. But it was not entirely true. Thailand held women in high regard. According to their traditions, there was a ceremony for the kids when they entered the temple, called mendicancy. During which, they had to beg for alms with a bowl the size of their stomach, which made them look like pregnant women. This served to remind them of the difficulty endured by mothers and to learn gratitude. In this context, women were highly esteemed. Many boys made the leap of faith out of the admiration for their mothers. Those who traded their bodies and dignity for money were despised by the locals. They were called the Black Pearls, a disparaging term in the country. The three traveled southward to a small fishing village. At night, Li Xiao led Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu to the shore, where many departed and landed in secret. Li Xiao faced the darkness over the sea and flashed his torchlight six times. Immediately, another torchlight also flashed back six times from within the darkness. Then, a fishing boat slowly sailed into vision. Li Xiao led Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu aboard and passed a brown paper bag to the head fisherman, count it yourself. The man shot a derisive look at Li Xiao's swollen face, trying to escape. Such a poor boy, Tisk. Li Xiao was fighting his urge to throw the man off the boat. He had been ridiculed by Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu for the entire journey. But how could he get to Thailand without the man on the boat? He knew when to hold back. Waiting for his temper to pass, Li Xiao hissed after a long silence. It's none of your business. Usually, illegal immigrants would travel to North America or Europe and only those who got themselves into trouble would go to Southeast Asia. Thus, the head instinctively associated Li Xiao with a loser trying to flee from usury or gang fights. He was lucky to be able to keep his body in one piece. The man did not mind at all. He slowly tore open the bag and started counting his money. Then, he shifted his gaze to Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu, I don't recall kids in the passenger list. I want more money. If they catch us and punish me for being a human trafficker, I can't explain myself. His five followers on the boat moved slightly and encircled the three of them. From the start, they never suspected the identities of their clients. If they did, they would not have the guts to ask for more, nor to take this business. Usually, those being smuggled would be transported to the open sea, where they would be taken away by merchants and then hide in their cabins. Then the fisherman's job would be done. It was a convenient business for them. The head sat at the prow, don't be nervous. It's been rather peaceful recently. But to be blunt with you, I may even know your boss or have sent him out before. So, which faction are you from? I don't find you familiar. In fact, he was trying to dig out their information. Although the clients were introduced to him by an acquaintance, he really did not know them. Sometimes they did double business to maximize their profits, and that little girl seemed lucrative. Which faction? Lu Xu pondered for a while, zombie faction? The man rolled his eyes, you are the savior of the world, aren't you? Lu Xu and Lu Xiaoyu exchanged a look of confirmation, and the latter gave a calm nod. It was him. The other reason for Lu Xu's decision to smuggle in with Li Xiao was to search for a person. 
based on the memory pieces they obtained, a person named Malicious Four would handle all trafficking cases in the region. Lu Xu lied to Li Xiao that they got the name via interrogation and Li Xiao questioned it no more before providing his assistance. He had made many old friends in his adventurous life. Chapter 373, Sentimental Translator, Atlas Studios Editor, Atlas Studios Of course, Malicious Four was not his birth name, but it aptly described his cold-blooded deeds on the sea. And Lu Xu decided he would not survive the night. Water was Lu Xu's stage. Lu Xu had been thinking about how he could put his water-type abilities to good use. Human bodies contain a huge amount of blood, whose main composition was water. Thus, could he manipulate one's blood? It was an extremely scary thought that gave people goosebumps. If he was fighting against practitioners, surely the latter could counter his attack with their own power. For example, in a fight against the fire-type metahuman Liang Che who was of the same level, Lu Xu's control over Liang's blood could well be fended off. Actually, it was possible to claim that one's body itself was his own stage. Lu Xu would need to apply ten times the force if he wished to achieve the same effect in his rival's body. After days of experimentation though, Lu Xu realized it would be much easier if his opponent's blood was exposed and they were wounded. In other words, he could only manipulate one's blood if the person was bleeding. But it all depended on whether he was facing a practitioner or a metahuman. In fact, the fishermen gang were all commoners. Meanwhile, the man still had not given up his pursuit. Does anyone know you fled here? Don't drag us down. His hidden message was whether his people would land in trouble if they sold their clients to human traffickers on the sea. Li Xiao glanced over, why are you asking this? Realizing his impatience, the man immediately came up with a story and hoped to exploit Li Xiao's sympathy. I have experienced hard times too. Years ago, I made a few foes and they drove me to Southeast Asia, where I spent a total of five years before I dared to return. But everything had changed. In those years on the foreign land, I was a waiter and a dishwasher, just to give my family a better life. But who knows? At that moment, he turned to lock eyes with Li Xiao and tears rolled down his cheek. Lu Xiaoyu rolled her eyes at Lu Xu with an unimpressed look on her face, while the latter was chuckling. So this is how you use your water power? A technique you've learned after so many episodes of Naruto? But Li Xiao was unaware of Lu Xu's creativity in exploring new application of his power. Li Xiao was stunned at once, such a talented actor? He probed, why are you crying? What happened? Was your wife stolen? Impossible. Your wife, the man quickly wiped clean his face. But once he turned around, his face was wet with tears again. Li Xiao could not believe his eyes. At first he thought he was acting, but was he actually serious? Li Xiao had certainly heard of the man's brutal stories from his friends. It was said that he could even sell a man's wife when the couple were trying to smuggle through. He was definitely not worthy of Li Xiao's trust. But the question was, why are you so sentimental, bro? I'm not crying. There's something in my eyes, of course Malicious Fur could not admit his weakness, as it might get him killed by his fellow fishermen. Besides, he really did not want to cry. Sorrow crossed Li Xiao's face, it's fine, bro. I know how it feels to have something in my eyes, and I know you've had a hard time. But I can't relate to your story. I have no wife, so I can't understand your feelings. Malicious for almost exploded in anger. For God's sake. There was really something in his eyes. He did not want to cry. Even he himself had no idea where all these tears were coming from. There must have been sea water splashed into his eyes. He wiped off his tears and blurted, My wife didn't get bloody stolen. It's my younger brother, before he could finish his sentence, tears started welling up from his eyes again, like a flood racing across the banks. Now, even Malicious Four's own people were shocked. They had never seen their boss cry like this. Li Xiao stiffened, you have something with your younger brother. 
Then, he moved further away from the man. Malicious Four was almost exasperated. When he got himself into trouble years ago, he ran away without a single thought for his family. In the end, they all died because of him. He earned his nickname with his stone heart to both strangers as well as his own family. When he came back, his sister-in-law threatened to report him, as she was well aware of his wrongdoings, to the family. However, Malicious Four sold her overseas without any hesitation. They said, even death would not clear his crimes. He must have sided with the wrong person in exchange for his hard life. None of it was true. But even he himself could not understand why he was crying his eyes out. In shock, Li Ixiao glanced around at Malicious Four's minions, is he, telling the truth? Instantly, tears rolled down the five men's faces as well, it was unstoppable. Li Ixiao froze, did you all graduate from a drama school? How are you able to act so perfectly on cue? Why? Was everything he said real? Malicious Four was stunned too, why are you crying? Li Ixiao turned to look at Malicious Four, hey, bro. Is that all seriously true? The latter could not explain himself at all. He turned to his minions, with tears in his eyes, what are you crying for? They were puzzled too, yeah, what for? In an attempt to save his boss's face, one of them answered, actually our boss he. Instantly, his voice was muffled by his welling tears. Li Xiao came over to pat him on his shoulder, it's okay. I understand. Malicious Four was cursing in his heart, what do you understand? Within a few minutes, the entire boat was filled with weeping and wailing. Li Xiao threw his gaze to the sea, with sadness in his eyes, we are on the wrong boat, aren't we? Lu Xu grinned, nope. It's the right one. Water type power is so interesting. Now he had finally understood that commoners were completely defenseless in front of him. He needed to wound metahumans and practitioners before he could apply this trick on them, but to commoners, it was not necessary at all. At that moment, Malicious Four had finally stopped crying. The tears were like a spell, easy come, easy go. Seeing that they had recovered, Li Ixiao sighed and leaned against the railing, when my master chased me out of the house, I was saddened too. I was forced to face the real and ugly world. Struggling to find my place, I often woke up not knowing where I was. Back then, I spent a while in Shanzhou, and a farmer wanted me to marry his daughter, their only daughter. But she was too ugly. Just when Li Ixiao was recounting his journey of growing up, he turned to see Malicious Four and his men sobbing again. Scratching his almost non-existent hair, Li Ixiao glanced over at Lu Xu, is it really this touching? I would say very touching, Lu Xu gave him a serious nod. <laughs> Water type power was so fun. Lu Xiaoyu's face was expressionless. None of them would be so moved had they not met Lu Xu. She followed Lu Xu, very touching indeed. Li Yixiao Chapter 374, Landed It was a mere misunderstanding. Malicious Four was not acting, nor was he genuinely sad. It could only be attributed to Lu Xu's creativity in the use of his water power. Lu Xiaoyu was aware of his awakening, which explained the sudden change in his hair color earlier. She had difficulty figuring out, though, why Lu Xu's understanding of magic powers was drastically different from hers, despite their common experience of watching Naruto. Luckily, Lu Xiaoyu had not heard of Lu Xu's magnificent feat of crowning Chen Zuan with the titles, Shower Head Chun, and, Ten Splits Chen. If not, she would have looked at Lu Xu in another light. However, Li Ixiao was completely ignorant of all this. He only found it unexpected to be on a boat of madmen. As for Lu Xu, he was having loads of fun controlling the flow of water in their bodies, as he concentrated it in their tear glands and had it roll out as tears. It was indeed a touching scene, two experienced men recounting their heartrending life stories. But this effect would not have been achieved if Lu Xu had been absent. Whomever Lu Xu fixed his gaze on would cry. Even Malicious for himself found his abnormal crying patterns inexplicable. 
Now, Li Ixiao's heart was softened by sympathy. How could he kill someone he somehow resonated with? He sighed, and turned his head to malicious for, how much longer? With tears on his cheeks, he replied, ten minutes. Li Ixiao quipped, you are probably the most sentimental man I've ever seen in so many years. Even Feng Yeming cannot be compared to you. One's nose would be blocked as a chain reaction from stimulated tear glands. Thus, at present, Malicious Four could not even spit his words out coherently. The fishing boat sailed further into the darkness on the open sea. Suddenly, the twinkling lights of a cargo liner came into view. Ten plus people were silhouetted against the railings and waited for the approaching boat. Malicious Four immediately ordered his minions to steer their boat towards it and signaled to the liner using his torchlight. This time, he flashed seven times, six short and one long, this meant the client's backgrounds were unclear and they were unable to take action. The other side signaled back, Roger. When they came closer, Lu Xu realized the other ship was enormous. People on the deck rolled down a rope for Lu Xu and the rest to climb up with, while a few boxes were suspended down to Malicious Four's boat on another rope. That was their cargo to be traded inland. In the end, Li Ixiao spared their lives. He wanted to conduct a thorough checkup on those people after he got back. But Lu Xu's opinion differed. Only he and Lu Xiaoyu knew the true source of their tears. A light shone down on the fishing boat, those on the cargo ship were astounded to see Malicious Four's eyes wet with tears, as though he was unwilling to part with them. They threw Li Ixiao a startled look, are you Malicious Four's family? I thought he had no one left. As expected, he was weeping for the loss of his family. Li Ixiao mused. The boat sailed away after the loading of the cargo. Lu Xu locked the leaving boat in his frosty stare as his energy started circulating while Lu Xiaoyu was quiet beside him. When it floated out of their sight, Malicious Four and all his minions suddenly felt an immense pressure from within their bodies. In a split second, the veins in their brains ruptured, and the six bodies erupted into a rain of blood. In the next instant, the lapping seawater suddenly turned into saws, which quickly cut the boat into pieces. But no sounds broke the midnight silence. Along with the boat, all their sins would be buried deep in the seabed. Lu Xiaoyu captured each of their souls and shattered them again and cursed them to eternal damnation. Lu Xu turned and led Lu Xiaoyu further into the boat. He took a glance at the hull and whispered, Is this the correct one? Lu Xiaoyu gave a definite nod, Yes. It was true, this ship was another ring in the crime chain. But Lu Xu could not take care of all the evil. He was not one of those superheroes in foreign movies who saved the world from apocalypses. If he really had to give a definition to his current plan, revenge would be an apt one. Was this not a more logical reason as compared to punishing the outlaws? You worked together in an attempt to sell my Lu Xiaoyu, of course I would kill you all. There was nothing wrong with that. But Malicious Fur failed to figure out their identities. Thus, he followed the normal procedure and sent them to Thailand. When they descended from the decks, they were still confused, since when did devilish Malicious Fur change so much? Only God knows why he's crying like that. The liner sailed southward after it was fully loaded at Jean Port. Then, they continued traveling towards Thailand after a stopover at a fishing village. Along the journey, Lu Xu, Li Ixiao and Lu Xiaoyu were told to stay in the cabin, and Lu Xu's initial concern of accidentally hurting other refugees seemed unnecessary. In fact, the situation pictured in the movies was all but an exaggeration. Where could they find so many people who queued up and waited to be smuggled away? Over the past few years, both the security and the economy of China had been steadily improving. This resulted in a consistent decrease in the number of people who fled to the Americas, Europe and Southeast Asia. Based on his preconceptions, Lu Xu expected to be hidden in a narrow niche, which did not happen after all. Everything was normal, except for a few ill-intentioned glimpses that crew members cast on Lu Xiaoyu, as they thought a little girl this pretty must be worth a good deal. But they would never lay a finger on those from unknown backgrounds. 
they did not want to get involved in some naughty trouble. As a matter of fact, however, their trouble was already on board. The encounter between Meng Yu and Lu Xu had determined their fate. The crew tossed three life vests to them when the liner was approaching the Thai port, you can't follow us ashore, for the Thai customs won't let you pass. So swim there by yourselves. It's less than 10 nautical miles from here to the coastline. As for whether you can reach or whether you'll get caught, only God can decide. My job is done here. The rest depends on yourselves. Li Xiao cupped his hands in a farewell gesture, fully aware of the rules. No one would take illegal immigrants to the port. He said, take care of yourselves. Farewell then. He did not think it was likely that Lu Xu planned to wipe out this ship as well. Thus, he had no special feelings towards the crew. A question remained unanswered in his mind, though, why did Lu Xu not kill Malicious Four? Did he sympathize with the devil as well? Thus, to Li Xiao, it was only a simple, goodbye, and with no intentions to kill them. But Lu Xu felt something was missing. Oh yes, tears of farewell. He thought to himself. As a result, Li Xiao turned to see the crew weeping once he finished his, goodbye, words. All of you, are so unwilling to let us go. Li Xiao was shocked to learn that sailors were so sensitive. Lu Xiaoyu rolled her eyes at Li Xiao for his bluntness. You still cannot see it? Actually Lu Xu had decided to reveal his water power. If Nye Ting was aware, Li Xiao would know it sooner or later. But to their disappointment, Li Xiao totally remained unsuspecting of it at all. No wonder he was beat up in the toilet by an ancient heroic spirit. He fully deserved it. Chapter 375, Thank God On the ship, the crew were getting ready to send Lu Xu and the rest off, their cheeks were still wet with tears. Although it was likely that some of them had already suspected something was up, they were only running a normal cargo ship with no experience in metahumans after all. Thus, no one dared to utter a word. At that very moment, a shout suddenly startled everyone, the ship is leaking. Instantly, numerous water blades emerged from below the ship and chopped it into pieces. Water started gushing in at an unimaginable rate and dragged the enormous liner down towards the seabed. Li Xiao was not a serious person either. Seeing the chaos on the ship, he quickly pulled down the lifeboat from the side, and, with a slight shake of his wrists, he snapped the thick rope tied to the lifeboat. The sight made all crew members tremble in fear as they cursed Malicious Four in silence for his mistake in bringing such people on board. The rope could easily sustain the weight of thousands of kilograms of goods, yet it broke in his hands. Out of the suspicion that Li Xiao was behind the leaking incident, some people immediately dashed to the equipment room for guns. However, Li Xiao retrieved a tiny sack from behind his waist, printed with strange patterns and was only the size of a palm. Unexpectedly, though, the sack produced a spear. Wielding black dragon spear, upon a slight shake of Li Xiao's hand, a pitch black dragon was suddenly conjured up out of thin air and engulfed the fragile ship's structure. Everyone was seized by terror. After he led Lu Xiaoyu aboard the lifeboat, Lu Xu gave Li Xiao a wave, let's go. Li Xiao's brows knitted together. Just a while ago they were giving us a warm farewell, why the sudden plot twist? Once he was aboard the boat, it seemed that an invisible force had taken control and instantly hauled them away from the ship at an incredible speed. But there was no captain. Then, Li Xiao saw, with his own eyes, Lu Xu stood calmly at the boat's bow, his gaze fixed on the sinking ship. Suddenly, they heard a loud noise, as though sharp edges were frantically tearing the iron hull apart. Now, they were on the sea, where even Li Xiao could not do any harm to Lu Xu. Nonetheless, on the other hand, Lu Xu might not be able to cause a scratch on Li Xiao's rough skin either. The ship was sinking rapidly. Many crew members, wrapped in life vests, were holding onto barrels or wooden planks to stay afloat. Then, in a split second, hundreds of water blades swept towards them like a mill and dyed the seawater with a macabre, red color. 
it was terrific enough to generate water weapons on such a large scale. Even if Lu Xu might not be able to lift a high wave with a flip of his hand like the Class B water-type metahuman. If not, he could turn it into a gigantic 40-meter water sword and let his enemies take a head start of 39 meters. The sight prompted Li Yixiao's question, double awakening? Yes. So the tears were due to you too, it took Li Yixiao too long to react. Yes. Li Yixiao felt discouraged, damn it. I though they were indeed so warm-hearted. Then, Malicious Four is already dead, isn't he? Yes, Lu Xu nodded. A thought suddenly struck Li Yixiao. As long as Lu Xiaoyu's safety was endangered, Lu Xu would become a maniac too. He had killed dozens so far. Would he become a serial killer? Li Yixiao studied Lu Xu's eyes carefully, only to see peace and clarity. Hey, don't let hatred cloud your eyes, Li Yixiao reminded, as he bagged his black dragon spear and smiled but don't take it too seriously either. Human traffickers deserve to die. Besides, which practitioner doesn't have blood on his hands? No, I won't, Lu Xu thought for two seconds, only money can cloud my eyes. From Li Yixiao's distress, plus 199. At that time, Lu Xu's accumulated distress points were already enough to ignite the fourth star. As expected, emotions like fear were the major contributor. However, it was not Lu Xu's way to do it like that and he would not carry himself too far on the path of killing. Actually, Lu Xu had always deemed it necessary to issue an identity card to kids, or just a simple one-year sequence number would do. This would enable the verification of their parents' identity via the internet, and those without such ID cards should not be allowed to board any long-distance transportation, including trains and buses. As a result, children could only be trafficked away on bicycles, which Lu Xu found unlikely. Of course, he was aware of the immaturity of his idea, which was never put into action. The lifeboat was thrust forward by the undercurrents below, which made Li Yixiao's eyes green, do come with me when I go to an island next time. The most difficult thing there is how to go home. But with you, there's no need to worry. You can get both attack and retreat settled well. When you ascend to Class B, even warships won't be able to catch you. Li Yixiao's daydream had already begun. Lu Xu suddenly asked, Heavenly King Li, have you been single all along? Lu Xu's curiosity was piqued during their conversation with Malicious Four. Li Yixiao was no longer young anyway. Li Yixiao's mood underwent a quick change. He immediately replied, with a voice full of sorrow, yes. I have never been married. Now, my greatest wish is to find a good wife and let her do whatever she wants. I'll let her wash dishes, let her cook, let her do laundry. Is that what you mean by a let her do whatever she wants? Lu Xu raised his brows, he finally figured out why he was still single. Who would marry a bloody psychopath? Afterwards, Li Ixiao babbled on about his ideal type, and even asked Lu Xu for an introduction if he knew any. When he succeeded, he said, he would thank Lu Xu wholeheartedly. But none of this entered Lu Xu's brain, if you really can find a wife, don't thank me. Thank God. The lifeboat was about to pull into shore, but Lu Xu's main concern was their location. The original destination of the cargo ship was Pattaya, this meant it was not too far away. When the boat drew closer to the shore, Li Yixiao suddenly cursed, damn it. They left us on a vacation island. We'll need to spend more money. I hope they'll rot in hell. Then he realized something was off, they were already rotting on the seabed. Li Yixiao had been to Thailand before and had stayed on some islands near Pattaya. In this region, there were only isles of varying quality based on their beaches, entertainment items, and standard of service. For those of lower quality, their beaches were a mixture of sand and pebbles, which was rather unfriendly to the feet, and the sea was dirty green. Usually, their only visitors were tourists and guides, who brought their customers to the islands by yacht and left on the same day. But on the bright side, precisely due to that, their approach went completely unnoticed. 
Clearly and unwillingly, Li Yixiao took out 3,000 baht from his pocket and passed them to a guide, we can't find our tour group. Please bring us back together with your group. The dark-skinned guide's eyes lit up at the cash and replied in awkward Chinese, no problem. No problem. Lu Xu exclaimed as he stared at the pretty women on the beach dressed in bikini, which included a few foreign women. Such a good place. Lu Xiaoyu shot him a glimpse, useless. At that instant, Lu Xu suddenly sensed a strong spirit qi wave from a blonde on the beach, she was a class C. With the opening of the remain drawing close, throngs of metahumans and practitioners were to be expected at the site. Lu Xu started to be cautious. Luckily, though, his and Lu Xiaoyu's celestial map were totally undiscoverable. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens